Welcome to Mega Dent Gaming. And today we're going to do a review on what I consider to be the best game in the Elder Scrolls series. Well, Skyrim is definitely the most popular, and there's people that swear by Daggerfall or Oblivion. I believe, especially once you get all the the player created mods in place to increase the resolution, the texture quality, and fix some of the stuff that was broken in the game. This is de my favorite by quite a bit. And that is Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind. So Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind was created by Bethesda, published by Bethesda. He uses the... Todd Howard was a director on there. He doesn't have the best <laughs> reputation amongst the hardcore gaming community at the moment, given, given some of the recent releases by Bethesda. He uses the Net Immerse engine, and it was released for both... Microsoft Windows and Xbox in 2002. The Xbox release was actually a port from the PC version. So the plot, central plot revolves around the tribunal, triumvirate of godlike beings ruling over Morrowind and their struggle against the former ally, the deity G Dagas Ur and his sixth house, a cult of followers stretching out from Red Mountain. After a storm and strange dream vision, player character begins in a town called Sedanin, fresh off a boat. So basically you have to go through a quest. You can go through the main quest. And the actual main quest really isn't all that long. What makes this game brilliant isn't so much the main quest it's the fact that there's so much you can do in the game. So let's pull up something. We'll s go around the city for a little while. It really does feel like you're in a virtual world. More so than Skyrim. When if you really... After you're, you play Skyrim for a while, you start talking to different NPCs, you start realizing, oh wait, these guys are saying a lot of the same responses. You might take out people in a city and they respond to you as if nothing happened even though leadership changed. By no means by saying Skyrim is a, a lousy game. It has its has some very impressive points to it as well as some issues. As far as the plot and the believability of the world, Morrowind definitely takes a lot more care into that. Now the graphics aren't as good as Skyrim, but I'm waiting. With a lot of the user created patches and mods, it actually doesn't look bad at all. Combat is a bit clunky, but so it, it is in a lot of first person RPGs, and it's not enough to get in the way. And it is based more so on your actual attributes and dice rolls on top of that than actual aim. So you can be look like you're hitting something, but if your skills with that type of weapon are low, you're likely not likely to cause very much damage. But it is a world where if you steal something from somewhere, there's actual consequences. There's nothing there. Well, let's say I run to it. I'll kill somebody in the street to demonstrate. It's a rather huge world. The lots of side quests you can undergo. There's also a couple major add-on DLCs for the game that add quite a bit as well. So you can opt to play this game in a lot of different ways. And you could just skip the whole quest thing and just explore the world and kind of make the world what it is, what you want it to be. Make the game, play the game how you want it, play it. 
There are a lot of creatures in this game that actually actually seem like they should be here. See if I, I start attacking somebody. There. I was hoping that I wouldn't die that quickly since this is a low level character. And I could demonstrate that other towns people would appropriately turn on me if they were within range and then over time other players would other NPCs would turn against me in a way that seems reasonable. So, so yeah, the, the gameplay can be a bit slow at times, but it's not so slow where it interferes with exploration. It's a believable kind of slow. There are some bugs in the game, like that guy. Disappearing, teleporting guy that just was stuck on something and teleported out. So yeah, it's definitely not a game without flaws. The the base game has quite a few flaws, and I'd be highly reluctant to put it in one of my must-buy categories. So the final review I'm going to give this game is taking into consideration all the different user-created mods and other user-created content. There have been patches and whatnot that have been created for the game. There's a, quite a huge community that continually that continues to stay creating different things for the Morrowind universe. Character creation system. Let's exit. Actually, let's do a new one. Character creation system gives you quite a bit of options to customize. It's basically kind of a ha Morrowind plays like a halfway point between Skyrim, given it's a beautiful, immersive world, more so than Daggerfall and especially Arena, where you could barely every house looked the same in those games, pretty much, and it's about impossible to see anything. Stand up. There you go. This game, dreaming. the world That's definitely it's large. You can see quite a ways in the distance, and it's believable looks beautiful but you also have a lot more character customization options which I might be not be for some people but it does give it more of a classic RPG feel where you have more control over your actual character skills instead of being forced to make 10,000 daggers to update some blacksmithing skill or to hit swing your sword so many times to update another skill like Skyrim So yeah, you start off in a ship, you're a prisoner, which that does kind of interfere with a lot of people's ability to role play. Given if they want to role play a lawful character, and you're starting off as a prisoner, you do have to do some mental gymnastics to make that this work. So yeah, it is. Alright, here we go. We do have a variety of races to choose from. Wood Elf, Red Guard, Nord, Kahit, Imperial High Elf, Dark Elf, Breton. Always like the Argonians. Then you have different skills you can choose from. Quite a bit with the appearance. And there's special as well, like resisted that are based on a race. Like Argonians resist disease, immune to poison, and water breathing. Great. I'm sure you'll fit right in. So what we have here is a game that is has quite a few flaws right out of the box. It does take some extra time to get user created patches and whatnot installed to get the game running optimally. But in the end with the massive amount of content out there and once you get everything up and running the way you want it to it does provide a lot of flexibility in how you want to play the game so I did say it's my favorite Elder Scrolls game but do I believe it's a must buy 
I know this is going to be a bit of a controversial opinion, but this is going to be the only Elder Scrolls game that I've played played all the way through at any point in time. I'm going to give a must-buy recommendation for it. Haven't played Daggerfall or Oblivion all the way through, nor have I done that with Battlespire or Redguard. With the latter two, having enough issues with them that I don't... They're not terrible games, but I don't see them being very much anything more than above average experiences, if that. So I am going to give this the, put this in the golden egg category. It's not quite the top tier, but it's the second tier of must buy games. And I'm going to put it right in between The Longest Journey and The Legend of the Red Dragon on my list. Like I said, it's a game that requires quite a bit to get up and running in such a way that's optimal, but once you get all the user mate patches installed, and once you browse through other mods and whatnot and get the game up and running to your liking, there's actually quite a bit of content here. It provides enough in terms of character creation and customization to have a proper role playing experience in a world that rarely feels like it's uh, just nothing more than a world created for a video game. Like a Grand Theft Auto or a Skyrim type universe where it's more like a theme park at times than an immersive world. So I haven't played the Xbox version so I can't really give a recommendation on that. However, let's see what the reviews for the Xbox One are. Track it down. On Metacritic, it's two points lower than the PC version. And let's see what the user says, since it usually says more. 8.5 user. A lot of people love it. Oh, somebody gave it a zero. A person that doesn't know the differences between the different yours. Uh, oh, yeah, this is somebody gave Morrow went to zero. Yeah, it's big. Yeah, it's a uh, RPG, but it's boring, repeti repetitive quests, lackluster fighting, and after level 15, your that's Y O U R a god, and ha to do something spec. Spectacularly stupid to die. I wouldn't say that's the case at all, and there's a lot of other content you can add to the game and play it kind of how you want. But 41 positive, 3 mixed, 4 negative for the Xbox. Oh, somebody said it's almost, it's almost impossible to hit someone in combat. I tried. Ten times and only hit once or twice. After I tried to kill a simple spider and died, I decided just to quit the game. I think this person kind of isn't understanding how a classic RPG works. Where it's not so much whether or not you actually hit him with the sword with your controller or keyboard and mouse movements. But it's about your skills as well. Yeah, the reviews in here, the bad reviews, seem to, it's like they're expecting, I don't know, the, expecting The Witcher 3 or Dark Souls and they got Morrowind, which this game is not either one of those. It is a different, well, they're both thrown under this RPG category that's used. This is more the classic style of RPG where it's more, you're more focused on the, the your actual skills and as far as what you're rated the actual numbers in the background being used to compute rates of success, damage, etc. which is a combination of a lot of factors including your character stats your equipment and uh, to a point RNG 
But yeah, let's see. Let's see what the PC one has. Yeah, I'm trying to play this on a controller, and I use a lot more than 10 buttons playing this game. Let's see, 8.9 on the PC, so user, so it's quite a bit more. Now let's see what the negative ones say. I bought it because I love Skyrim. This whole game had the best narrative series. Yeah, peep. I, I do. The, the combat is clunky, like I said. But yeah, the people that complain about this could have they were just kind of missing the kind of how this game was the how this game was constructed and how to properly play it which that's fine there's people that love love games that border on graphic novellas that have very little interaction while other people need very fast paced twitch type games like a first person shooter is it definitely is more of the exploration and taking the time to consider your equipment and statistics type game than actually just charging in and engaging in meaningful combat. It's more narrative driven than combat driven, that's for sure. But anyway, if it if you're looking for a Skyrim clone, this isn't it. But if you played Skyrim and thought that the uh, Numerous changes to the way the Elder Scrolls games were done, or at least RPGs in general. A lot of the changes with the character creation and customization process has been dumbed down or at least changed in such a way where it's not to your liking. But you like the 3D world and the lore, this does give you kind of a middle ground between the two. So yeah, it's a, it's a flawed, flawed game with enough elements in there. Or I do highly recommend it. But like I said, if you can't stand the combat and you want a game that's combat oriented, there's many other games out on the market currently that will definitely meet that need for you. Hope you enjoyed the review. Please like, subscribe, and have a great day.